So question seven then from paper two of the 2015 new hire. Here we go, integration. No calculations, because it's not a definite integral, just indefinite integrals, but you've got trig terms. Six marks altogether. Well, it seems to be one of these lead-through questions where you need to know A and B before you can answer C. However, what's the first bit? For the first two marks, that is fairly straightforward. You've only got the two terms there. The thing to notice about this term is that cos 2x is actually a function of a function. The inner function is 2x, which is linear, so you can integrate it. The outer function is cos. So using the chain rule, as you would call it, if you were differentiating, you'd multiply by the derivative of the inner function. If you're integrating, you do the opposite, divide. So integrating the outside, cos goes back to sine because sine becomes cos. So it goes to sine 2x, and that's just a coefficient. However, you then divide by the derivative, so it's divide by 2, so I'll make that 3 upon 2. 1 just goes back up to x and put in a constant, and there it's done. And the marks were one mark for differentiating, or rather integrating either of them, I would have said that one, and the other mark for integrating the other one and remembering to put the constant in. Now, part B, for two marks, you've got this little identity here. And, of course, that's the thing with trigonometry. There's all sorts of ways you can rearrange trigonometrical expressions. In this case, it says, show that this is equivalent to that. This isn't an equation to solve. This isn't a sort of a double-angle equation here. This isn't an equation to solve because these two sides are identical. They'll be the same no matter what value of x you choose. If you tried to rearrange that equation to solve that equation, you just end up with 0 equals 0 because the two sides are identical. No, it's an identity. I'll, I think I'll set it out as an identity. I'll start with the left-hand side. The left-hand side is 3 cos 2x plus 1. And in an identity, I've got to try and change it into this. So you just look at what have I got and what do I want to change it into. Well, I've got two x's and I want single x's, so I want rid of that. And I want squares to appear. And I don't want that one. I don't want any numbers. So the first obvious step is then to say, well, I know something that will change a double angle into single angles, and that's that expansion cos 2x. And since I've got both of them mentioned, I'll use that form cos squared x minus sine squared x. So look at that plus 1, though. What does that multiply out to? 3 cos squared x minus 3 sine squared x. And then you would stop there. Oh, that's the wrong number. I want one more of them and one less of them. And I don't want that one at all. And that's where you can say, ah, that 1 seems a bit unusual because it's just a nice little harmless number 1. You could replace that 1. You could replace that 1 with a sine squared plus cos squared. That's one way to do it. And now it all works out nicely because there you go. I've got four of them, four cos squared x, and with one of them being added on, I'm down to just minus two of those. And that's exactly what I wanted. And the two marks here were one for changing the cos 2x and the other one for knowing how to deal with that one to achieve the result you needed. Now another way of doing that might have been to say, well, oh, I'll leave my three cos squared x there, but I don't want one of them, so if I take one of them away, so I've only got minus two sine squared x, that means I've got one minus a sine squared x, like an extra, but I'm getting closer, and then you remember that sine squared plus cos squared makes 1, just to abbreviate it. So cos squared is actually 1 minus sine squared. So then you could say that's equal to 3 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x plus, and then you could show this part here, is another cos squared x, and then that takes you to the answer. But that's slightly longer to set out be much neater just to say, oh, a 1 can get changed into a sine squared plus cos squared. So part C then. Hence, in other words, following the path that they've taken you through, or otherwise, choose your own path, find the value of this integral, just again for two marks. So hence, following the path that you've been led. You integrated this, because that was perfectly straightforward, and then you found that this was the same as this expression. So when you're presented with this one, you're just meant to notice 
That's pretty close to that. It just looks like a multiple of it. And since that was identical to this, you've already got the answer. So it's just of how can I make that the same as this expression? Well, what have I got? If I actually had 4 cos squared x minus 2 sine squared x, then the answer would be this straight away. But that's not quite this, so what's the difference then? Well, they're the other way around, so it's the negative of it. And these seem to be double those, so if I did negative a half times that, that would be the required thing. So since this is negative a half times this, then this is negative a half times that. We'll just put that down. It's negative a half of what you did in the very first part of 3 cos 2x plus 1 dx. Now the first mark here is to recognise the link between these two parts, either here or here, the negative a half being the multiple, and then it's just a case of saying, well that means I've got negative a half over that would integrate to, and that would integrate to 3 upon 2 sine 2x plus x. So that gives me negative 3 upon 4 sine 2x minus a half x, and of course plus c, where c of course can be any number at all. And that's the second mark. Now, the otherwise part, obviously hence meant they've led you through it so you've got all the clues there, but the otherwise part would just be, what well, if we were just to integrate that from scratch? as if that were the question on its own with no other assistance. Again, you'd have to realise you don't know how to integrate a function of a trigonometrical term. So these would have to be changed. You do know how to integrate trigonometrical terms if it's just some multiple of the angle, because then the inner function's just a linear one. So you'd have to say to yourself, can I change the square of sine just into sine or cos of a multiple of an angle, and of course, yes you can. You'd say, well, sine squares come from cos 2x. Cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And I could rearrange that to read this. 2 sine squared x would be 1 minus cos 2x. So sine squared x would be halving it. A half minus a half cos 2x. That'd replace that one. Similarly, cos squares, I can get that from a double angle. Cos 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1. And then instead of just rearranging that to read cos x equals, and then multiplying it by negative 2, which you could do because I'm just going to substitute it, I could just say, well, I can just get that. It's most, more or less what I want there. So if I take that across, negative 2 cos squared x would be negative 1 minus cos 2x. And there's my two substitutions. So sine, sine squared x could be replaced by a half minus a half cos 2x. And I'm not subtracting an expression because that's what I've got. This whole expression, negative 2 cos squared x, is minus 1 minus cos 2x. Just tidy it up. A half minus 1 is negative a half. Negative a half minus another 1 is minus 3 upon 2. Almost there. Now everything can get integrated. That's easy to integrate. And I can integrate that because it is a trig function of just a linear one. So now I've got negative a half x. Whoops. Cos goes back to sine of 2x, but divide by that. So it was over 2. It'll now be over 4. And then plus c. There you go. Same as before. Just doing it from scratch, if you like.